We had the opportunity to talk with Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner about various topics, but welcome to Effingham again, Governor. Yeah, it's great to be back in town. It's a wonderful community. Yeah, I knew you knew your way here. <laughs> uh, you had the opportunity to appoint several people from the Effingham area, Craig Lindball and Ann, da yeah. Ann Daters and uh, yeah. Jim Schultz. Jim Schultz. And, uh, yeah. uh, let's see, you also got yeah. Gene Bonoff. From yep. Dietrich. Yep, no, that's right. And your buddy Andrew Flock was yeah. a part of our communications team. But a lot of wonderful leaders in Effingham. It's such a great community. And uh, as, as I always say all the time, if every community in Illinois was as well run as Effingham, we wouldn't be as such deep yogurt as we're in the <laughs> state of Illinois. What brings you here today? Well, you know, we're here traveling the state, actually. I'm, I'm on a little bit of a driving tour uh, talking about the stopgap uh, spending plan that we passed last week. So I started off, I left Springfield on, uh, on, uh, Tuesday morning, we were up in Rockford, and we were Moline, and we are in Galesburg, and then yesterday we were in uh, Peoria and uh, Quincy, and today we drove from Springfield up to uh, Champaign, then here in Effingham, and tonight we're going to Fairfield, and then on to DuCoin, staying in the governor's residence down there. We're getting the word out to tell your listeners and all the people around the world what's going on um, in the state government. Last week was an important step in the right direction. We did not get a long-term balanced budget with reforms to grow the economy. That's the ultimate goal, but we took a step towards getting that done. We got a stopgap spending plan done that does three things that are important for the state. First, we got um, spending that is much less than what Speaker Madigan's supermajority wanted to do. They wanted to pass a $7 billion out-of-balance budget um, that would have forced a big tax hike with no reform. That would have been a disaster. We were able to stop that. So that's good, number one. Number two, we got our schools open with more money on time. That's a big deal for our teachers, our students, our homeowners, our parents around the state. We got an affordable amount of money for all schools, and we did not have to do a bailout of Chicago public schools. Speaker Madigan's majority was trying to demand that Illinois taxpayers send a half a billion dollars more to Chicago that other districts wouldn't get because that district is so mismanaged. We said, no, that's not fair for Chicago to get a special deal. All school districts should get a little bit more, including Chicago, but everybody. And we were able to get that through. So that was a big, a good step in the right direction. And then finally, we got pension reform on the table, front and center, in a bipartisan agreement. We got pension parity bill passed, but it won't become law unless um, there's pension reform comprehensively done on all pensions throughout the state of Illinois. And that can save taxpayers billions in the future. So that was a good step as well. I know a lot of educators were awfully excited about the full funding for the full year. Yep. Uh, first time in seven years, as, we've, as we're well aware. Uh, that has given a great deal of comfort, I think, to students and their parents, as yep. well as the educators involved. No, that's exactly right. You know, uh, I ran for governor to really focus on two things. More jobs, more strong economic growth in the state, more competitive economy, and number two, to have the best schools in America. Best schools in every school district, regardless of whether they're rural or high, high uh, income or low income. We need great schools because our, our kids are our future. And Illinois is dead last. We're 50 out of 50 among the states for state support for education. And Speaker Madigan's majority had cut school funding four times in the last 10 years. And I said, no more of that. Schools come first. Teachers, students come first with the taxpayer money. And I demanded more money last year. The General Assembly didn't give me as much for schools last year as I asked for, but they get, get more. And this year, we got up to the full foundation level. That's a great step in the right direction because I want the best schools in every community. It's critically important. I'm not really one to pick at a scab here. I noticed last week when you made your closing remarks, you thanked the General Assembly members who got behind for the compromise. You thanked Senate President Cullerton. You thanked Mayor Emanuel. But I noticed one person didn't get thanked, uh, or did I miss it when you said thanks to Speaker Madigan? Yeah, no, unfortunately, the Speaker was more, uh, he was against the compromise. Uh, he wanted the big bailout for Chicago, and uh, he did not want to have pension reform on the table the way we got it on the table. He does not want to do pension reform. So I didn't, I'm not out to criticize him, but I also wasn't going to thank him because he wasn't all that helpful in the process. So now you have this plan in place, k 12s funded all year. You have a plan through the election, which I understand yep. was a key selling point in reaching an agreement. That's exactly right. What do you think, what are the likelihood that we're going to see a, a first class budget in place after the first of the year? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, if you look at the history of the General Assembly over the years, 
the the big votes and the real changes get done in lame duck sessions after a general election. So we'll have about a 60 day window between November 8th election and uh, mid January when the new General Assembly is seated to try to get some good votes done. We need real reforms in, in Illinois. We, we've been going down a, 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 a not a good road for a long time. We've been a one party state. Speaker Madigan has had the super majority for years. He's been the majority for more than 30 years. The spending has been out of control. We have the biggest debt deficits, unfunded pensions in America, highest property taxes in America. We have fewer jobs than 17 years ago. We've been going the wrong way for a long time. That's the reason I ran for governor is to change that, give Illinois a better future for our hardworking families here. So we need three types of reforms. First, we need political reform. Our democracy really is broken. Um, your listeners may not know this, but two thirds of the elections around the state this November, there's no opponent. There's one person running. That's wrong. The voters need a choice, and we need competition. We have gerrymandered districts that look like spaghetti noodles and lock in incumbents. So um, we're, we're asking for fair map redistricting reform, and we're also asking for term limits. I'm pushing hard for term limits. Nobody should stay in office longer than eight years, maybe 10 years, but I'm asking for eight. That's what I'm going to put on myself, and I believe the General Assembly, they should be public servants, work for eight years, and then do something else. Don't stay locked in power for decades. That, that will change the culture if we can get that done. Secondly, we need economic reforms. Our manufacturing base has been bleeding out. Our, the number one state where our jobs are going is over to Indiana. Indiana has the lowest workers' comp rates in America and a much more competitive regulatory climate over there on businesses, labor regulations, and others. We need to be competitive. I've asked uh, one thing for uh, economic um, growth. Let's change workers' comp in Illinois. We don't have to be the lowest rates in America, but we can't be the, some of the highest rates. We need to be more typical, more average. That'll help us recruit more manufacturers here. And Caterpillar told me workers' comp costs five times as much for them in Illinois as it does in the other states where they build their equipment. And Illinois has um, you know, been losing Caterpillar jobs. They've been growing their jobs out of state for years. we got to reverse that and keep those high-paying jobs here. And then finally, we need government reform so we can bring down our tax burden. And that two big reforms are needed. One, we need pension reform so we can have more affordable, um, fair uh, pensions that we don't take away anybody's historical benefits, but get more affordable changes for the future. We also need to bring down our property tax burden by getting more local control. Empower the people in Effingham to control um, the schools here in town. The school districts, the city, the county should be controlled here by the local residents. It shouldn't be dictated by Springfield with unfunded mandates and regulations that require how collective bargaining is done, how competitive bidding is done, how prevailing wage is handled, how outside um, contracting. That should be decided at the local level. That shouldn't be decided by Springfield mandates. So that's the other big change we can get done to bring down the property tax burden. When you have the opportunity to step back for a second and take a look at the state, what pleases you about what's going on in Illinois? Well, I tell you, we've got the hardest working people in America, the best agriculture, the best location, and the best infrastructure. We should be kicking tails. Now, um, the good news is, when I travel the state, people say, Governor, stay strong, don't back down, you're on the right track. And a lot of people go on to say, I'm a Democrat, I don't even normally you know, support Republicans, but I love what you're doing. And a lot of uh, people don't know this, I'll let your listeners know, we're trans transforming state government. We've already cut $800 million out of the operating costs of state government in our first year. That's huge. We've also changed the um, uh, employment labor contracts inside state government. We've agreed with 18 unions now. Um, no more salary increases based just on seniority or longevity. We're paying bonuses based on productivity and giving a share of taxpayer savings as bonuses to our state employees so they can make more money, but where taxpayers win with huge savings. That's a home run for taxpayers, and it's really changing the culture in Springfield. We're also modernizing our IT system. A lot of our departments don't even have computers, and others are running software from 1974. That drives up the cost and the inefficiency and, and, and uh, makes the turnaround time terrible. We're transforming the state and I'm excited about the big changes we've made. I did want to ask you really quickly if I could about agriculture since it's huge statewide but certainly in our area. Sure. As far as how agriculture did in the budget, the county fairs, the soil and water conservation yeah. districts and things like that, how things would go? Yeah, so I would say okay. We didn't get everything that I would like. I'm a big I'm a big agriculture guy. I come from a dairy farm family, and my, my brother and I still raise some crops and have some some cows. But um, agriculture is the backbone. It's the foundation of the Illinois economy, and we need to support that in every way we can. I'll give you an example of what I'm pushing for. We uh, Our fairgrounds, I'm staying in DuCoin tonight, and, uh, and then I'm going home to Springfield. Our fairgrounds are deteriorated, and those are a place for us to market our agriculture. 
um, we haven't been investing. We haven't had the money to put in our fairgrounds. I've asked for a foundation, a bill to create a foundation so we can get donations from agribusiness around the country to donate so we can fix up our fairgrounds. We could probably raise 20 or $30 million, save taxpayers that money and fix up the fair. Speaker Madigan's majority won't call the bill. They're, they're holding up um, um, a foundation so we could get the private sector. It's a win-win for everybody, but they're, 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 Holding it up as part of leverage. That's that's what we've got to change. The system needs to change, and that's why we need to get the, the a, a two party state again, where we can get uh, an equal voice on both sides of the aisle, so we can get changes made. Appreciate the chance to visit with you. Thank you for coming to our community. And uh, well, it's great to be here with you in town. It's always wonderful to be in Effingham. I look forward to coming back soon. Very good, Illinois Governor Bruce Ratner. Thanks for the.